My name is Jordan Belfort. The year I turned 26, I made $49 million, which really pissed me off because it was three shy of a million a week. That's all fine, but we don't find a way into the central character to make him in any way empathetic. We're making a name for ourselves. Nobody knows if the stock is going to go up, down, sideways, or in circles. And therefore, what you end up doing is sitting there watching a bunch of stuff that occasionally is funny, occasionally has jolly, funny moments in it. We were making more money than we knew what to do with. We don't work for you, man. Yeah, my money tape to your goose. But it lacks the moral depth of Scorsese's greatest works, not because it doesn't tell you that this guy is horrible. What's wrong, Daddy? Right. But what did you bring home? Because you do think he's horrible, the lifestyle is horrible, the wealth is horrible. There's a sequence in which he's having conversation with Rob Reiner, who plays his father. FBI, any kind of booze you might want? No, the Bureau forbids us from drinking. Duh. And he says, well, you know, this life is obscene. And he didn't get his, that is exactly what it is. So I don't think, I don't have any truck with the thing which says, you know, this is, the film is immoral because it glamorizes the lifestyle. I, didn't, I don't think he does. You can only ever judge that self by, that, by your own response. So follow me, you could about to go. I'm doing 500, I'm out of control. But there's no way to go. And there's no way to slow. I, I didn't feel one atom of me wanted to have anything to do with that lifestyle. If I knew what I knew in the past, I would have been like that on your But I do think at three hours, it's rambling and indulgent. I think its portrayal of the female characters is, you know, is very, very problematic. Big money sign. They get launched at the time, they stick. Yeah. This is their gift, okay? They're built to be thrown like a lawn dart. One, two, three! Stop. I think it is, you know, a male chauvinist world seen through male chauvinist eyes and narrated by a male chauvinist character. So we don't want to get a bad reputation. The fact that Belfort himself gets a cameo leaves a slightly bad taste in the mouth, but that's the least of its problems. The biggest of its problems is you just go, yeah, I hate you and I hate this world. Why am I still here? Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at this piece. This is a new watch that I recently bought. Now, I, hadn't, I haven't bought this watch uh, for my own collection. I bought merely to review and do this video. This, of course, is the Tag Heuer 1000. Let me just get it in the shot. We'll take a closer look in just a moment. I'm very interested in watches and films. What really intrigues me is how watches are cast, how they kind of reflect their characters. Everything in the film, the costumes, the lighting, every shot, everything in frame is always thought about. And so is the watches. I mean, in fact, actually, I should do a wristwatch check. I've com I'm completely gone 80s mad today. I'm wearing a bright pink. Of course, I've got my Seiko Giugiaro. This was in the Aliens movie. And I've got my 1983 Day Date from Tudor, so very 80s theme. And of course, this is another child of the 80s. This is from 1985, and really indicative of that uh, uh, gold-plated age. I thought, actually, this watch in Wolf of Wall Street was really well cast. Those of you familiar with the film, it's, it's about the exploits of, let me get this right, this is a real-life story about Jordan Belfort, played by Leonardo DiCaprio. And he's this kind of shady upstart that uh, kind of conquered Wall Street in a, in a very kind of, in a bit of a dodgy way. And the film is really about his excesses uh, and his kind of debauchery and of course directed by the legendary Martin Scorsese. And, you know, back in the early days of this channel, I used to do film reviews quite regularly. Uh, and then I, I became more about watches. One of the first films I reviewed was Taxi Driver, which is one of my favorite Martin Scorsese films. 
Wolf of Wall Street, it's uh, not as sophisticated. It doesn't have the levels and, and social commentary, and and it's 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 a very kind of straightforward film. Now, don't get me wrong; it's beautifully done. It's very well acted. Leonardo DiCaprio, Jonah Hill, who's, who's I think plays the uh, his kind of sidekick, is also excellent. The the film's very well made, uh, but it it lacks that kind of depth that his earlier films uh, have. It's, of course, it's very funny, but a little bit too long, in my opinion. I mean, you know, it's almost three hours of this over-the-top uh, life of excess. And in fact, by the end of it, you, you, I personally was almost kind of disgusted by it all. You almost felt tired uh, because it's just, it's just full on. So how does this relate back to the watch? Well, it really reflects the character very, very well. This guy is all about talking the talk. There's a scene where he throws the watch into a crowd and he says, you know. There is no nobility in poverty. I have been a rich man and I have been a poor man and I choose rich every time. Because at least as a rich man, when I have to face my problems, I show up in the back of a limo wearing a $2,000 suit and a $40,000 gold watch. It's not a $40,000 watch, and it certainly is not solid gold. And it just represents him, is the, the, the whole kind of lie that he's not only feeding to his own people, but you know, a, as a business enterprise, it's so symbolic of all of that. And that's why I think the watch is perfect. It looks like a Submariner. Uh, it looks like maybe one of the, 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 the Rolex GMT. It looks gold, but it really isn't. You know, all that glitters is not gold in this case, certainly. However, it, it, it is of some kind of horological significance. The Tag Heuer 1000 line is, is, is quite integral to the evolution of, of the Tag Heuer uh, divers. It's, it's a really interesting history, especially the watches that preceded it before uh, Heuer were bought out by Tag and became uh, tag Heuer, as you see on the dial here. At the end of the day, it's a quartz piece. There's not really that much fine watchmaking going on. And of course, it's gold plated. It's mere uh, the illusion of, of, uh, of something more sophisticated than it really is. A bit like the character that Leonardo DiCaprio was playing. It's, it's all the smoke and mirrors in order to get people's money. Now, personally, the movie, uh, it's, it's, it was quite entertaining. There are very funny parts in it. Uh, but personally, it lacks the, the depth and, and social commentary and dramatic interest of Scorsese's earlier pieces. There are very strong parallels to the Goodfellas movie, for example, which is quite a similar tale of somebody that's involved in something shady, in this case, uh, mafiosi in New York, and uh, it, it chronicles their rise and fall and, and you know the excess of the lifestyle and, and all the rest of it. But in that movie, Ray Liotta, even in his depth of, of, of debauchery and depravity, there's still something likeable, there's still something that holds your interest, and mainly due to the writing, the really good writing. I feel Wolf of Wall Street lacked that. It, it was very kind of vacuous. It was almost, you know, I, I guess it's trying to, re to reflect the character of, of Belfort, the real Belfort, that he is just all about money, there's nothing really likeable there. He's, he, there's, it's very shallow. The film actually is quite shallow. If we look at Goodfellas again, for example, there's a beautiful shot. The young Henry Hill, played by a, a kid before Ray Liotta plays him later on in the film, uh, he sets alight a car that explodes and there's a shot of him running away. Frame freezes and he's almost in this kind of crucifix, a silhouette of a crucifix. And that was deliberate. There's a lot of kind of hidden messages in the review of Taxi Driver that I did very early on in my channel. So many levels to that film, so many ways of, of, of interpreting it, so many things going on. It's commenting about the Vietnam, it's commenting about society, it's commenting about you know religion, politics, all the rest of it. Embedded into the subplots and, and, and different uh, ways you can interpret the film. I think in the, the main weakness for me for Wolf of Wall Street it was just an excess after excess after excess. There wasn't that depth to it that Scorsese's work 
he's so so respected for. As a film, of course, it's very entertaining. There are some beautiful mo there are some funny moments that I really enjoyed. Uh, I thought Leonardo DiCaprio was absolutely phenomenal. And at the end of the day, we you know it kind of makes me think: Did his involvement being a ambassador for Tag Heuer, you know, was that something something to do with this? Regardless, it's a really well cast watch for that film. Anyway guys, let's switch perspectives now and have a closer look at this watch. Now this is a, quite an interesting watch in regards to the history of TAG and the Hoyer brand. It's a watch that was released at the very time Hoyer were being bought by the TAG brand. This particular version that we see here, this came out in 1985 and unlike its predecessor was the first uh, of the 1000 series to have Tag and Hoya both on the dial as you see here. Initially not much changed uh, with the Tag Hoya 1000 uh, professional. Uh, it was essentially the same watch as the 980 series. However in the late 80s the love of gold and two-tone uh, really kind of started becoming fashionable and it too infected the 1000 series. So there was all kind of combinations released. In fact, I'll try and include a, a picture that size of the screen. So there was a two-tone version, there was a black PVD and gold, and of course, this version. Now, the size of it is very much of its day. It's a mid-size. Uh, we'll, actually, we'll do the dimensions right now. Now, I must state that I have sellotape on the end of my calipers to protect the watch. So we're looking at a diameter of 37 uh, millimeter diameter, really nice thickness of 10 millimeters. Lug to lug, we're looking at 45 millimeters. Lug width, we're looking at 18 millimeters. So a really kind of classic uh, size of its day. Very, very nice, especially for the smaller wrist. It wears unbelievably nicely. However, this bracelet is not original. This is a uh, I had to buy this aftermarket. I couldn't find a gold plated bracelet in this size that was in good condition. So unfortunately, uh, I had to go aftermarket, but I wanted to complete the, the Wolf of Wall Street look. Of course, you know, Jubilee bracelets are very notorious for stretching. So however, this was very, very affordable and you can replace it as it gets worn in. So we'll just do a quick wrist shot. So as you can see, on my small wrist, it really fits very nicely. It's extremely comfortable. Now, let's uh, discuss the watch itself. So let's have a look at the dial itself. Now, as you can see, it's a, it's a lovely black matted dial with the logo and 1000, all the details written in gold. Beautiful Mercedes hands. There's a little bit of patina on the loom, which is really nice. Uh, it doesn't seem to hold its charge. I think, uh, I think the loom has, has given out. We have a 120 click bezel. Very, very solid and very precise. Uh, with a lovely black matte uh, insert. Date at the three o'clock position. And of course it's a quartz, it's an ETA quartz. Now, I've actually upgraded the movement. Uh, I found this online. I really wanted to review it. I've, I've never had a 1000. I've, I've, I've seen them about. I bought just the head of the watch. The actual condition of the piece is, is really quite good. Most of the gold uh, is there. It's of course gold plated, but uh, stainless steel underneath. Beautiful uh, case back. You see the, the Hoya, nice engraving. It's, it's in remarkably good condition. Uh, and there's all the information on the back. The original movement is the 984013, as it's described in the back, but actually I've upgraded the movement because it wasn't working. I bought a special ETA quartz movement. I bought the 95112, which is, uh, based on my research, is the direct replacement for this movement. So it's actually got an upgraded movement now with a new battery and everything. Um, so it's ready to go. Obviously, as the DAS says there, it's 200 meters water resistance, and you can see it's Swiss made at the, the bottom there. Really nice patina to it. The gold plating is pretty much all there. We'll see if I just get my pen there. There's a little bit of, I'm not sure if you can see it there, but a little bit of some of the gold plating is starting to come off. Considering its age, it's this one is in remarkably good condition. Uh, I do intend to sell it. I'm not going to be keeping this. I just wanted to get it in to do a review. I mean, it's not a historic watch, but it's it's definitely a watch that 
has its place in history and is significant because of the age it represents. It's very much a product of the 80s, that uh, kind of <laughs> loads of money generation. It's the yuppie that wants to um, uh, pretend he has a submariner but can't quite afford it or is maybe he's just too cheap and or has all his money in, a, in, a, in the Cayman Islands and actually is too cheap to, uh, to afford the, the, the gold Rolex. So he buys this, which is... You know, it's it's interesting because it is it is a quality Swiss watch, but it's a quartz. It's it's not an automatic. Um, having said that, you know, realistically, as a dive watch, it, it would do the job very very well. You know, it's a quartz movement. It can take a knock, can take a beating. Uh, the only thing wrong with it is that obviously it's gold plated, uh, which does not really lend itself. Uh, what on earth are you doing with a with a gold diving watch? It's it's a bit of a oxymoron. But actually, this is stainless steel. So at the end of the day, it is not a precious metal. It's just it's pretending to be perfectly cast in the film. Really summed up the character uh, very very well. And DiCaprio wore it quite loose. You'll see in the pictures he wore it quite loose, which is quite cool. And on, on this flimsy jubilee bra bracelet, it looks pretty good on a strap as well. Uh, I've seen pictures of it on straps as well. So it's quite dressy because of it's so thin, which is which is funny and and I guess you know gold is more of a dressy um metal or look, you know. So it's it's kind of saying adventure, it's kind of saying, you know, that kind of James Bond lifestyle, you know that it can go diving. Um you can take it on a yacht and uh, do all the shenanigans that uh, actually <laughs> It kind of makes perfect sense, but you need a, a quartz waterproof diver if you're going to be taking quaaludes and driving yachts and um, doing a hell of a lot of drugs and snorting off the, the back of supermodels' uh, butt cheeks and, and, you know, all that, that kind of debauchery. And maybe, you know, this is the perfect watch uh, because had it been a precious metal, it probably wouldn't be able to withstand the punishment of uh, you know the, the the wild party lifestyle so actually it is kind of fit for purpose and it makes kind of sense so the plating of it is actually 18 karat it's got quite a quite a rich deeper color uh, you might spot a bit of difference in the color of the, the cheaper aftermarket bracelet it doesn't it, it's not too noticeable but it doesn't you know from afar you don't notice it but as I said it's quite rare to find a gold-plated one tag hoyer 1000 in this good condition so anyway um, just a quick look this is the old movement here as you can see um, and this is the date wheel esslinger.com and I had my um, my watchmaker install it it's, uh, it's done pretty well I've got a screw down crown here obviously it is of course hackable which is pretty cool just pop it back in and it being quartz, you know, you don't have to worry about it, so, uh, which is really pretty good. Uh, and even the gold plating on the crown is still there. We've got the little Tag Heuer logo. So we have, uh, in the traditional kind of uh, diver look, we have a brushed surface at the top, polished, high polish on the sides. It's very tastefully done, I must admit, and I think a stainless steel version would be really, really nice. Uh, I just love the size. It's a flick bigger than the Omega midsize. It's a very, very nice wearing watch. It's extremely comfortable. So that was my closer look at the Wolf of Wall Street Vintage Professional 1000 watch by Tag Heuer. All right, guys, let's take it back to the studio. So summarizing the watch, good, good things, bad things. Well, the good things, obviously, it has the film connotation. Uh, I think actually it's a very nice size. I wish they'd make divers like this again, this in this size. I think the, the, the design is very tasteful, it's very classic. I do love the, the dial. I really like that mix of black and patinaed loom and lovely uh, little Mercedes hand. It is, it is a charming little watch. I, I almost think I might buy one in stainless steel to keep. This one I am going to sell. Now it's been restored and I put the new movement and the, the bracelet and all the rest of it. I'm going to sell it as a complete piece. So guys, if you're interested in buying this, uh, email me or message me and uh, let's work out a price. And I really bought it to make this video, to be honest. Minus is, well, it's, it's got acrylic, it's got mineral uh, glass. Uh, but having said that, because it's, it's very flush, it's very flat, 
it's quite difficult to scratch and uh, this can be easily replaced so it's not really a big deal and at the end of the day it is a Swiss ETA uh, or ETA movement in there so you you are getting something that that you know is is going to do its job okay guys I'm going to wrap it up there thoughts queries questions opinions down in the comments below always love hearing what you have to say of course, thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. It really does help me. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, guys, ciao. $26,000 for one f***ing dinner. Okay, no, 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 this could be explained. Dad, we had clients, we had Fiza, the Pfizer Fiza clients. Right, the porterhouse from mm -hmm. Argentina. The expensive champagne and the wine. We had to buy champagne. And, and you ordered all the Sides. Tell them about the sides. I ordered the sides. So sides? Yeah. Sides? $26,000 yeah. worth of sides? <laughs> what are these sides? They cure cancer?